Here is a 1991 Canon model UC10 camcorder. This is technically a relatively simple camcorder. It's just standard Video 8 Monoro audio. But design-wise, this is quite an interesting little unit. Certainly some interesting ideas and a lot of creativity went into this one. The UC in the model number probably stands for Ultra Compact, and this is quite a compact little unit, as you can no doubt see. Unfortunately, it does not work anymore. Bad surface mount capacitors, and neither in record mode nor in playback mode it does anything useful. The mechanism does work, but all you're getting out of this is a black picture with some static white disturbance on the bottom. But since it is such an interesting design, before I throw this out, I thought I'd document this a little bit. So let's start our tour on the front. Now, on the front, we do have, of course, the lens. Now, this is an 8x optical zoom lens, and uh, it does have a super macro AF, internal focus and zoom, which back at that time in 1991 was actually quite something new. Uh, previously, you always still had the rather big lenses sticking out in the front with manual zoom and focus rings. This one doesn't have it to make it more compact. Now, right here, we have the monaural microphone. And they have put some effort into this. There is a wire mesh grill around the microphone, and it is mounted in a sort of a rubber ring to decouple it a little bit from the camera itself. Now, down below is this little door, which does have the video and monaural audio outputs, as well as a DC output jack in the center to plug in an RF modulator. I should also point out the lens cap, which has a clip on it, labeled Canon, and the clip allows you to just uh, store this away, just uh, attach it to the hand strap on the side so that it doesn't keep flopping around. Now as we move around here to the back, up here we have the zoom rocker control. It's just a simple single speed. Now up here is an operate button, which I think is some sort of a standby feature. Up on top is the mode select for camera or playback mode. And now down here is where the cassette is loaded into the camera. There is a, an unlock button right there that unlocks this door. And unlocking and swinging this door out of the way reveals the eject button right there. So that is protected in normal operation. And also, when you unlock and flip away this door, this right here is unlocked. Now, this might seem like it was just a part of the palm rest, but it isn't. You flip it up, and it turns out to be a remote control, which unclips from the camcorder like this, and then that is your standard infrared remote control. Uh, kind of an interesting design on this one as well. The transmitter is on top, so clearly you're supposed to hold it like this, but everything is labeled sideways, and also the zoom buttons are arranged sideways. Kind of interesting, but this does clip into the camcorder right there, so it's always there, and you don't lose it. Now, taking off the remote control does reveal a better look at the tape compartment. There is a window to see the tape moving in there. Let's clip that back in, like so, and see, there is a uh, 
pin sticking out right there, and that locks into this door, so this is not flopping about when you don't need it. Moving on to the back, we have, of course, the viewfinder up on top, record button, and the battery compartment. And that's it. There is nothing on the back. And that takes us back to where we started from. We have the viewfinder, which does, of course, tilt up. And it does also pull out to compensate for any large battery that you might install in the back. Now, the arrangement of the buttons is quite nicely done. We have up here the controls for the focus, automatic or manual, and as you can see, there is only some push buttons to operate the power focus, but those for once have actually been arranged in a way that makes sense. So you have a forward-facing arrow for far and a backwards-facing arrow for near objects, rather than what you often find on other camcorders, just some nondescript plus and minus buttons arranged one underneath the other. Around here, we have some often used controls, at least back in the 90s, those would have been often used. A fade, backlight compensation, and date and time insert. Below, we have the digital title controls for superimposing things on top of the video that is being recorded. And then around here, we have some more controls. These are, of course, the transport controls in playback mode, labeled in blue. But in record mode, these actually also serve different functions. So we have the record search, but that also doubles as plus and minus buttons for the menu system right there. There is a select button down below. Counter reset. Then down here is the edit switch. Is there anything else to show? Well, let's take a look at the bottom. Now, on the bottom, as you can see, it's the Canon UC-10e, the European version. DC 6 volts. Now, there is only the battery compartment in the back. If you want to supply this camcorder with uh, DC from an adapter, you have to use one of these uh, dummy batteries. And uh, this is actually quite awkward. It plugs in like so, and then the uh, cable is actually coming out at the top. Now, the other thing that uh, I really don't like about this camcorder is this right here. This is the tripod mount, or much rather, this is the sad excuse of a tripod mount. Now, first of all, this is actually completely plastic. The threads are plastic, so it's easy to break. And because it is, as you can see, it's mounted right at the edge of the camcorder, so you don't get a lot of support in this direction. And in the other direction, of course, you have the tape compartment, so each time you want to change your cassette, you have to unscrew the tripod. To be fair, of course, being an ultra-compact camcorder, this was clearly designed to just be used handheld most of the time, so the tripod mount was probably really just an afterthought. We need to have that because all camcorders have it, but, uh, of course, the normal use case would have been to... Uh, just uh, use this camcorder handheld, like so. And that's it. The 1991 Canon UC-10 camcorder. Quite a nice one with some really creative ideas in the design. It was, by the way, also available with this black section in a gray color. That looked even more interesting. And look at what I just found in the carrying case, the original RF modulator. So this gives you this one giant plug that has the video 
audio and DC connector all in one. And of course, that just very simply and conveniently plugs into the front of the camcorder like so. And then this RF modulator, you can just loop your regular TV antenna connection through this. And it does give you a selector switch for the PAL standard and the channel selector. So that is the RF modulator. And for completeness sake, I might as well show you the original charger. This is quite a chunky thing, but aside from that, nothing special. We have a charge and operate, no discharge feature, and the dummy battery to the camcorder plugs in right there. Thank you for watching.